All right. Well, welcome, everyone. My name is Natalie Roman. I am a case manager in the Daniel Jordan Fiddle Foundation Transition and Adult Programs at UMNSU CARD. This is part three of our Transition and Adult Social Skills Training Series. And today's topic is handling feedback and finding a friend group. Two really important skills, especially right now that most of us are at home. So we're gonna quickly just go over the rules and a little bit of review. We're gonna talk about what is feedback, the different components or parts of feedback, then a little bit about friendships and then how to find a friend group. So as I mentioned, this is a series. So this is part three. So handling feedback and finding a friend group. And we started the social skills series because a lot of our adults are interested in making friends. This series is based on the peers curriculum, which is an evidence-based social skills curriculum so that adults can learn all these different skills and practice so that they can make connections and potentially friends. We do have one more session. It is designed or we created it more for parents and family members. Adults are still welcome to attend and that's our session four. And earlier in the chat, I put the link for our bulletin board. So if you do miss any information or you'd like to review it again, everything will be there. This recording will be on the bulletin board starting next week. And the presentation visuals, visuals and videos will be there starting tomorrow morning. So the recording, you have to wait until next week. This is a quick snapshot of the bulletin board. So starting tomorrow morning, you'll see session three list, the videos and the presentation. And just quickly, the rules for participation, we're gonna keep your microphone on mute. That way everybody can hear me quick, clearly and the videos clearly. The best way for you to experience this training is if you wanna watch it in speaker view. If you have any questions or comments, please use the yeah. chat. And then we yeah. also, make sure that we're being respectful or and friendly in the chat. So we want to make sure there's no swearing or negative feedback to other participants. And just like we've done before, when you see this visual of a person thinking and this write in, we want you to think, take a moment, think about it and then write it in the chat. So I have Jennifer Feinstein today. She's going to be reading those answers. So we're going to start off with what is feedback? So here's my first question. We're gonna focus on question one first. What do you think of when you hear the word feedback? What comes to your mind? What do you think of when you hear the word feedback? Go ahead and take a moment to put it in the chat. Okay, so we've got some answers. Some people wrote advice, um, what someone observed, criticism, ideas, information, responses, another advice, opinion, information, listening. Wow, you guys then, are right on. Yeah, and one more said various things, critique, criticism, feedback, ideas. Yes, I love that last answer because there are many forms of feedback. We're gonna talk about one specific one and I'll show you in a little bit. So thank you for all those responses. Now for question two, it could be a yes or no. Do you think there's a right or wrong way to handle feedback? Are there, is it only a right way? Or are there also wrong ways? What do you think? So is there a, so it's not yes or no. Is there a right or, and a wrong way? So yes, people are saying, yes, there is a right and wrong way. No, there is not a right or wrong way. So we have both. We have people saying both and some people are saying both there's a right and a wrong way and that it depends. Yes. All right. That is true. And we're going to learn a little bit more about it now. So when it comes to what is feedback, we're talking about information about reactions either to a product, a person's performance, and this can be used as a basis for improvement. So that's what I really want you to think about when we're looking at feedback, what can change? What can we improve? Now, as I mentioned, there's many types of feedback. So in this training, we're really just going to talk about constructive feedback. 
And in this specific type of feedback, there are, it's based mostly on observations. So the things that we can see, they are specific and it's issue focused. So we're gonna be talking about constructive feedback. Now, where do we get this type of feedback from? So sometimes we might get it from at home, in the community, if we're in school or we're taking classes, maybe we're volunteering and we're working and we're getting feedback in these different settings. Who can give us this type of feedback? So it can range from family to friends, teachers and professors, or your boss or supervisor. So these are all really important people in our lives and we probably see these people often. So they're going to be giving us feedback. Now I have a picture here of a little bit of all different things. So just to acknowledge that feedback comes in many different ways. On the bottom right is actually the picture of the training evaluation that we will send you by email so you can give me feedback about this presentation. And we're going back to that feedback is used to improve or to make changes. So if you've worked in the past or have work history, you might have had a performance evaluation. If you've ever bought an item from Amazon, they might ask you for a review. If it's a product you really liked, you might have given it five stars or four stars. And maybe if it was a product you didn't like, maybe one or two, and you might have told them why you, give, you gave them a one or two. And I know when I shop on Amazon, I use this a lot to make sure if the product that I'm going to buy, is it worth it? Is it actually going to do what it says it's going to do? There's also different feedbacks where it's based on a scale where it says excellent, good, average, or poor. Sometimes we see these with services or sometimes restaurants have these now. You can get post-it note feedback where it says, you know, keep up the good work. If you're in class or in school, you might get feedback directly on an assignment like this essay, this one got a C and it's got lots of comments on it. So that's giving feedback or evaluating the assignment. And there's also verbal feedback, things that we say to each other. So we could say it or type it. Um, so sometimes you might hear things like, you're doing that incorrectly, please do it like this. And they might show you how to do it or slow down and take your time. You know, maybe if you're rushing. Feedback can also be things like, I like your shoes, you know? That's a really cool shirt. And sometimes when we're talking about friends, maybe someone might say, you know, you're calling too much or texting too much and I feel overwhelmed. So feedback comes in a lot of different forms. So why is getting feedback important? Why do we do it? Why are we taking the time to observe, make sure that we get, we're getting details and then talking to the person? So it really is to first inform making sure that person is aware. Because sometimes, especially if we're doing lots of things, we might not be aware of what's going on. Especially if I've done something the same over and over again, I might not realize that I'm doing it incorrectly, which brings me to number two. We wanna make sure what we're doing is accurate or correct. So if it's incorrect or inaccurate, we might have to change what we're doing. And then we always think about it as improving and if we're improving and really working our best or doing our best at school, at home, work, volunteer settings, that will help us maintain a positive reputation. Now, in the past sessions, we talked about reputation and overall, we want a positive reputation. We want people to come to us for help. We want them to be available when we need help. So accepting feedback or handling it in a positive way can help your reputation go up and get lots of check marks on that side. So now we're gonna talk about the components or parts of feedback. And this is probably the most important part in the entire presentation. So when we talk about feedback, there's really three areas that we need to be aware of and make sure that when these happen, are we taking breaks or are we going to respond to feedback? So I want to make sure that you are all aware. So the first one we're gonna talk about, and we have these little icons here to help us in our next slides, is your emotions. 
So things of how you feel, whether you're feeling happy, excited, upset, maybe you're feeling neutral, your emotions, but your feelings are also sometimes your physical feelings. So I know when I'm angry, I can get really pink and I start feeling hot and my heart rate goes up. So when it comes to adults, I know for this training, we have teens and adults. So some of you are already adults or going to be adults soon. It is known that as an adult, you are allowed to feel your emotions. You're allowed to feel whatever you want and however you want. But the key is you have to understand that these emotions can influence your behavior and things you say when you react. So I know it's happened to me where I'm really stressed out or I'm angry and I might say something that I don't mean. And let's say if we say that to a friend, that's sometimes hard to take back after we say it. So a good practice is to acknowledge, you know, if I'm mad right now or I'm upset, maybe let me take a break and then I can go back to talk to this person. So first we're gonna recognize our emotions and feelings. Next is behavior. That's where these little eyeballs are because behaviors are the things that we mostly can see. So as an adult, you're not allowed to behave however you want because there are rules and real life consequences for your behavior. So there's many laws, there's rules in different settings where you can get into trouble or have consequences if you behave a certain way. So the same thing in feedback. If you're accepting it and you're positive and you're listening, that's great. But if you start yelling, you start making excuses, then when we get to the result, which is the third part, things can change. So when I talk about the result, it's really what is happening here. What happens during and after feedback, and this is including all your emotions and behavior. So we're gonna go a little bit more into detail. So reactions to feedback. So there's many different reactions to feedback, but we're gonna focus on three for this presentation. So the first one is you might be feeling angry or upset. So this woman right here looks pretty angry. You can see that her mouth is open, her shoulders are up. So we're gonna talk about three different things. So we have those icons again. The body is representing your feelings. So when you're angry or sometimes upset, you might clench your jaw, grind your teeth, you know, might have a headache, stomach ache, maybe your heart rate starts to increase. Some of us might start sweating like myself or you might start feeling hot right here in your neck or in your face. And that's your body's natural response to when you're getting angry or upset. So it is important to recognize when you start feeling these physical symptoms to recognize, you know what, I'm angry right now or I'm upset. Maybe I need to stop what I'm doing or maybe not respond right now. Because if you do, let me go to the eyeballs, you might start yelling, screaming, you know, you got to put your eyebrows down, maybe you're going to clench your fist, or you might actually storm out of the room or storm out of the conversation. And if you do that, what's the result? So you, so getting angry or upset may show the person that's giving you feedback that you're not serious, that you don't want to improve, you're not motivated and you're disinterested. So we have some videos that we'll see later that shows a couple of these behaviors. So we wanna talk about these feelings, what it looks like in behaviors and what's the results if we continue. Next, we're gonna talk about just feeling neutral. So neutral is right in the middle where we're not angry, but we're not excited or happy. We're just kind of in the middle feeling content. That's how we feel. What it looks like tends to be maybe some active listening. So you're just paying attention, trying to figure out the situation. You're not talking back or providing excuses because you're still just getting in the information. You're listening to the feedback and you're not showing any big emotions right now. Maybe you're just processing the information. Now, as a result of that, sometimes being neutral in the moment allows you then to reflect or react on your own time. So if we compare neutral to anger, and anger, sometimes we react very quickly. Neutral tends to be a better emotion that we need to be in 
so that we can take our time to see what's going on, process the information, and then make a decision on how we will behave or how we will react. So we'd like to be in the neutral zone. Or you can feel happy or excited. So this is gonna depend always on your setting and who you're talking to. So the way that it feels, you know, you feel good. Sometimes you might feel a sense of pride or that you're really proud of yourself. You're like, yeah, I did it. You might be highly motivated. Yes, let's do the next one. The way that it might look like is smiling. So this gentleman here is smiling, got a nice big smile. You might be nodding in agreement of the feedback. Your hands might be like, yeah, I did it. Just like this gentleman here, you might be cheering. So that's always going to depend on what setting you're in. I know, let's say if I was in the office and I got everything done, I might not be like, yay, where everybody is watching and looking at me. I might be like, yes, at my desk. So if we behave in this way, what's the result? So getting happy or excited may show the person that you're interested, you're motivated, and you're pleased with the feedback, and you're kind of ready to continue. So this is definitely an emotion we would like to strive for, but sometimes with feedback, we might feel happy or excited. You might want to try to be neutral, or it might make us angry or upset, and that's okay. Like I said, as adults, you can have all of these emotions, but the next thing you have to think about is how do I behave based on my emotion? So this brings me to our oops. We're gonna talk about some social errors. So here's my question for the chat. What are some mistakes people make when receiving feedback? So tell me whether it's something that personally happened to you or you witnessed it happening or you heard somebody did something. Tell me in the chat, what are some mistakes people make when they receive feedback? Okay, we've got getting defensively mad. Yep. Having a negative response. Oh, taking feedback as a personal attack. Ooh, that um, sometimes. Yeah. Any others? Okay. Oh, getting into trouble. Yep. Um, a couple agreed with the taking it as a personal attack is the problem. And that happens. And that's a very natural emotion, especially if you think you were doing a great job, that you were doing everything correctly. And then all of a sudden someone's like, no, you did it wrong. Our natural, it's natural for us to be defensive, but especially in a work setting or maybe even volunteering, we have to be careful on how we act on that emotion. So we're going to look at some common social errors in this area. So we have three different scenarios. Three is the magic number for tonight. In scenario one, we're gonna talk about some feedback at work. So we're gonna follow um, a individual named Tom and he's working at a grocery store and he's gonna be stocking. In scenario two, it's feedback at school or in a class. So Tom is in his math class and he gets a test back. And we're gonna see how he reacts. And then in scenario three, feedback at home or the community. So this is feedback given by a friend of Tom to see what Tom is doing and how that friend is feeling. So we're gonna go to our first scenario. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna play the video. We're all gonna watch it. And then we're gonna have these questions in the chat. So as you're watching, I want you just to think of, you don't have to put your answers yet, how do you think the supervisor feels? And then would she want to talk or work with Tom again? So we're going to watch this video. Now these are home videos, so the volume might not be as loud. So let it start playing at your home computer or tablet or device that you are using. If it's a little low, go ahead, put your volume a little bit up. And I will have closed captioning on. It's rolling, I'm done. Hello, Tom. You called me over? Yeah. Are you done with your work? Yeah. All right, let's first check your work. Let's see, we have your visual here. Tom, you're not allowed to have your phone out in the workplace. You can use it during your break, but can you please put away your phone? One second, I'm just going to talk about 
Awesome. All right, so we're going over the shelf that you just got. So here in the visual, we have three rows. On the shelf, we only have two. So it's really important that the customer gets to see all the boxes and all the different varieties of boxes. So I have a suggestion for you. We're gonna take these off the shelf and I wanna show you that each box of pasta has a different name. This is right. Penny, Penny. So a good way to help you out is if you wanna first sort the pasta by name and then you can put it on the shelf to make sure that you're showing each different type of pasta. I can't handle this. There's a glare in my eye that's messing me up. I hate this. Job sucks. All right. So it doesn't seem that Tom was pretty happy. So in the chat, I first want you to think about how do you or how do you think the supervisor feels? So Tom behaved in that way. How do you think the supervisor feels? And I'll give you a moment to write that in the chat. Okay, so we had a lot of people note that he's not being professional. So the supervisor, it looks like annoyed, shock, maybe. Um, maybe he became childish. Maybe the supervisor thought it was childish. She felt maybe unappreciated, probably stressed out, um, hurt, irritated. It looked like she was trying to help him out and then he would, she would feel irritated and frustrated. You guys got it, definitely. When someone behaves in that way and somebody kind of got it right on target, childish or unprofessional, you know, do you think that that supervisor wants to work with Tom again? So this is the result of the behavior. Uh, we're seeing multiple no's. Multiple. No, 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 no. Yes, so that's correct. You all got that right. I'm going to add another question in there. If you guys want to put in the chat, what were the things that Tom did incorrectly? There was a lot of stuff, but what did you see? What did Tom do incorrectly? I'll give you all a moment. Um, he was on his phone. He yelled at the supervisor. He was uninterested. Mm -hmm. He ignored the feedback and then he got mad, had his phone out. He screamed, he rolled his eyes and his head. He also kept interrupting her. Good job on noticing that. And his body language, he got mad and defensive. And then he left the room inappropriately. Yeah. There's a lot of things that are happening. So if we were thinking about what was happening to Tom, maybe he was feeling that anger, upset, and he was allowing those emotions to dictate or influence his behavior. So he did, he exhibited a lot of inappropriate behavior. So great job, everyone. For scenario two, we are looking at Tom in class. So I know some of you are, especially for the teens or in school right now, or if you're in classes online, um, here's just a scenario in person. So I want you to think first, how do you think the teacher would feel after what happens? And do you think that they're looking forward to their meeting after class? Good afternoon, class. I'm going to pass out your math test from last week. Now, some of you have a note on your test. If it says, please see me, make sure you stick around before you go to your next class. Tom, please make sure you see me after class. A D? I started all night for this test. This sucks. Oh. All right, so we got a big reaction. So based on this reaction, how do you think the teacher feels? Right, so we definitely know that he was mad, but how does the teacher feel? Oh, hurt. She is not happy. She might feel annoyed hurt, upset, unhappy, yep. shocked. Yeah. She might feel shocked. I like that one. Another annoyed vote. Weirded out. Yeah. <laughs> attacked. If she might feel that she was being attacked. Yeah, it seems that Tom has a lot of big reactions. So he's definitely letting his feelings or emotions 
influences behavior. So do you think that this teacher is looking forward to meeting with Tom after class? No, not not really. not, right? Yeah. Especially if that's the way he reacted in front of everybody, how is he going to react when it's just one on one in that meeting? So great job, everyone. Now we're going to look at feedback within the community or at home. So this video has to do with friends. So we have a friend here and Tom is her friend. And it seems that Tom has, be, has been behaving in a certain way that makes them feel uncomfortable and she's trying to give feedback. So this one might be a little bit low because you're gonna see some face masks. So if you do have to put, if it is too low on your side, go ahead, put your volume up a little bit. What? Who is messaging me? Wow, that's a lot of messages from Tom. Oh, this is way too much. What is that? Tom? Hi, Tom, what are you doing here? Came over because you weren't answering. Tom, I have to tell you something. You're messaging me way too much and calling me a lot, and it really makes me feel overwhelmed. So I thought we were best friends. We're supposed to talk all the time. We are best friends, but sometimes it's just becoming too much. I don't like this. We're friends. All right. So for that one, for that scenario, how do you think that friend feels based on what happened with Tom and how he received that feedback? How do you think the friend feels? Um, annoyed, um, overwhelmed with all the messages. Um, uh, Tom was upset. Um, and the woman's reaction is understandably annoyed, sad. A couple people think she felt sad, disturbed. Okay. He, sh he showed up at her house. That was unexpected, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And do you think that this person still wants to be friends with Tom if this is the way he's going to react and behave? Uh oh. No, uh, most people are saying no. Um, yeah, probably, or maybe not for a while, but maybe no. Right. And I like whoever put maybe not for a while, sometimes with friends. Either we have to take breaks or have conversations and give feedback. So we might see Tom having a conversation later on. So you guys have been doing such a great job with these scenarios. And even though some of these are definitely acted, you can see how it can happen in real life, especially for someone that really is emotional. And when they get angry or they get upset that they act in certain ways. So now we're going to go into the steps on how to handle feedback. So overall, there are seven steps. So I want you to think about lucky number seven when we're talking about how to handle feedback. So the first one, it says that we want you to keep your cool. And what we mean by that is your emotion. So keeping your emotions in check. If you're starting to get upset or you're starting to get angry, then we might need to do a couple of things before we go into the feedback or before we react on how to stay cool and calm. So for some people that might be taking some deep breaths, counting silently to 10. For others, it might be actually asking for a break and saying, you know, I'm not ready right now or can I have a moment? And then you can, once you're calm, you can come back to the conversation. Sometimes that might be available. Sometimes it might not. In the chat, what are some ways that you uh, or some things that you do in order to keep calm or to stay calm? And I'll give you a moment. Um, think of something happy. Mm -hmm. I like that. 
take a nap. Take a nap. For certain things, that might be an option. If it's not at work, right? Working would be hard. Um, listening to music. Like um, some people listen to music in their mind. Have quiet time. Be positive and open-minded. Uh, take a walk. Walk away. Yeah, you can definitely walk away. Playing on the Nintendo Switch if you're able to. Listen to an audible, audible book, I'm assuming. Okay. These are all great ways of calming yourself. What I like is that we have all these different options. So it's good to pick maybe two or three, because as we mentioned, and, and Jennifer said that, let's say somebody said, take a nap. We might not be able to do that at work. We could do that at home probably, but we want to have maybe a backup strategy or maybe two backup strategies just in case in that specific situation or setting, we're not able to do that. So for this one, we wanna keep in mind at least two to three strategies to help us keep our cool and calm us down. For step number two, I'm gonna put my face over here. We wanna use whole body listening. Now we use our ears to listen, but we also need to make sure we are using our body to listen to. And there's a picture here and we're going to point out some different areas. So when we start from top to bottom, at the top, we want to try to give eye contact or look towards the person. So for example, if I was giving the presentation this way and looking off to the side, a lot of you would probably think, is something happening? What's going on? Maybe she's not paying attention. She's distracted. So we want to make sure that we're showing the person that we are listening and interested by either looking at them or looking towards them. So I know sometimes it might be uncomfortable to look at someone straight in the eye or stare at them because sometimes that can get intense. Um, if not, you can look at their forehead or the bridge of their nose or look behind them. So at least you are facing them, whether you're standing or sitting you wanna to try to be facing the person. The next part we're talking about is our ears, where we're listening. So paying attention and actively listening. Now, I could be listening, but I also hear some other stuff happening in the background in my house or even in the hallway, but I'm still listening. Now, if I'm turning my head or if I get distracted, I'm not actively listening to the person. So you wanna make sure we're actively listening to each part of the feedback. When we're talking about our mouth, we wanna listen without comment at first. So I know that tends to be hard. So a lot of you were talking about becoming defensive. And sometimes people might see that as an excuse, that you're just giving excuses. You're being defensive. So a good way to just not start that process is listen and wait. Let the person give you the feedback. And then once they're done, they might say, you know, I'm done. Or what do you think? Or it's your turn to talk. You want to give them the time so that they can give you the feedback. And then you'll have your turn. Sometimes at work, we might not have that opportunity. And that is okay. Sometimes our supervisor might say, hey, Natalie, I need you to finish up this project. It, you know, you need to do this, this, and this, and that's it and then I won't have anything I can say. So it is important to first listen and then wait. We, all, we already talked about bodies facing towards the person. So whether you're standing or sitting, you also wanna make sure that you aren't engaging in any activities to be distracting either to yourself or to the person. So for example, if I pulled out my phone right now and I just started texting in the middle of a training, all of you would be like, what is going on? What is wrong with Natalie? So you wanna make sure you're not having distractions like any technology. You wanna try to have what I call calm hands. I know sometimes like I'm nervous. If I have a pen, I'll start flicking it or I might be fidgeting. If you do that and that helps you calm down, that's okay. Just try not to do it up front or in, um, in front of the person, you can put your hands in your lap or on the side. If you are sitting at a desk or a table, you can put 
your hands behind it. So just being aware of the space that you're in. So here we want to use whole body listening. So that includes our ears and our bodies. And we want to make sure in our body language. So if I was just chilling like this and just, you know, put my seat back and maybe put my arm up and just said, Hey, that's kind of a not professional and B maybe shows that I'm not interested or if I'm tired and I start to lay down. So it's really important for us to look at our bodies and be aware of our bodies when we are listening and getting feedback. For our next one is we want to wait before we respond. So we talked a little bit about that already where we want to listen and then we can comment. So we just wanna make sure that it's really important that we get to give that person the opportunity to say their piece or their part. So we're gonna wait until we have that turn or opportunity to speak. We might not always get that chance. Now, sometimes in that moment, they might be saying a lot of information. <clears throat> So in good practice, it might be good to repeat what they say. Now we don't want to do this to make fun of the person. It's more about making sure that you heard it correctly. So if my boss tells me, Natalie, you need to make five copies in color and 12 copies in black and white, then I would say, okay, I have to make five copies in color and 12 copies in black and white, correct? or did I get that right? And then that way you can make sure that the information you are getting is correct. And this can really help that relationship with that person because it makes them feel heard, that you care, and that you have empathy. We wanna make sure that if they told you something and you forgot, that you at least try to remember or try to clarify if you got confused. We're going to talk about remembering the next step. So that's the wait to respond. Next, we have, we want to thank them for feedback. So when you give somebody feedback, sometimes it takes a lot. I know when I first started giving feedback to my friends or if I get feedback to a coworker, I want to take my time to make sure what I'm saying is appropriate and accurate. When we take the time to do that, it's important to thank the person because it shows that you care and that you're appreciative, especially if they took the time to help you and make you aware. So sometimes coworkers might give you feedback and their intention is to help you, not to make you look bad, not to say you're doing that wrong, it is to help you. So it's really important to say at least a thank you. So that way you are saying it in a genuine and kind way. You're not like, oh, thank you. Um, you don't want to say it sarcastically. You don't want to say it funny. You want it, it to come from a genuine place. Sometimes you can just say thank you. Or you could say thank you for telling me. Thank you for your honesty. Or thank you for your feedback. I appreciate you letting me know. And these are great ways to be able to build up these relationships, not only at work, but also with friends. Sometimes friends might say, you know, you are calling me too much and I might not have realized that. So it's really important to thank them to take that moment because the other option is they probably wouldn't tell you and maybe they would just stop being friends or maybe at work, you wouldn't get the same opportunities. So it's really important to thank the person for feedback. Next is writing down feedback. So we are all human and that means we all make mistakes and we all forget. So I'm not perfect, I make mistakes and I have lots of little notebooks and I use my phone and my notes to make sure I write things down so I don't forget. So if you're someone like me and you forget, try to make the effort to write things down. You could do it what I call old school pen and paper, which I do sometimes, or you could use technology. 
When you do this and the person giving you feedback sees it, especially at work, it shows them that you care, that you're interested and that you are going to work on about what they're talking about or what is happening. It also eliminates that person having to repeat themselves. So if you're at work and my boss said, Natalie, you need to make five copies. And then I go to my desk and then I get the copies and then I go to the copier and I'm like, oh no, I forgot how many copies did I have to make? And then if I go to my boss again, I'm like, how many copies did you tell me? She's like five. I'm like, okay. I go back to the copy machine and then somebody down the hall tells me about their weekend. And then I'm like, oh no, I forgot again. If I go back to my supervisor to ask for the same information, what do you think? Do you think she's going to be happy? Maybe she might think I was distracted. Maybe I don't care. So it can be really important to write things down or use technology to help you remember. Now six is you can go over or review the feedback with a trusted adult. So I always like to say that everybody has a support system. And we wanna make sure that you are connecting with your support system. You don't have to do it alone. Now, take a moment to think about who's in your support system right now. So for some of you, that could be a therapist, could be a life coach. You might have a, a set of friends or even family that can help you. There's also some other professionals that can help as well. So use your support system. You don't have to figure this out all on your own. Ask for help. Problem solve together. Tell them the situation. So then that way they can help you give examples and also share that they went through things like that too. Because not everybody is perfect. Not everyone handles feedback the right way. I know I still work on how to handle feedback because it is in our nature to be defensive first. So it is important to call on your support system and say, hey, you know, this happened to me today. That my boss told me this, or, you know, my friend, it, you know, told me, and I don't know what to do. Use your support system, problem solve together. Now, if the feedback that they're telling you calls for a change and you need to change your behavior, it's something that you need to follow through on. So as adults, we always say that saying sorry or saying it won't happen again is not enough. So a little kid can probably say sorry and then accidentally trip you again because they're little and they're learning. But as adults, we can't just say sorry. We have to change our behavior. So sometimes we might have to review our feedback. So it's really important if you wrote it down, you have that information. So you don't have to go and ask the person again. So if you have that feedback, start seeing how you can change your behavior. You can use your support system to talk about this. So if at work you're taking too long to do tasks, maybe you might ask another coworker, hey, it takes me a long time to do this. How do you do it? Can you show me a better way or a faster way to do this? And then that way you start learning and you can change your behavior. Now, if you keep behaving the same way after the feedback, now to that person, their perspective of you might change and might say, you know what, Natalie doesn't wanna change, she doesn't care, you know, maybe I won't help her out anymore or maybe we won't be friends anymore. So you have to be willing to change, to recognize what is going on and to start changing your behavior. Now this doesn't happen from one day to the next or overnight but you want to attempt the change. And sometimes we will try and it doesn't work and that's okay, but it's really important that we are trying. So now we're gonna visit Tom again and we're gonna talk about feedback with friends. So here on the left side, we have the seven steps on handling feedback. So to review, um, to keep your why can't I see it? To keep your cool, to keep calm. Then you want to use whole body listening. 
So I'm not just listening with my ears, I'm listening with my whole body and I'm checking out my body language where I'm not just relaxing and saying, yeah, tell me about it. Three, you wanna wait to respond. So if I'm like, but I, but I did it wrong, but no, but I did it right. And no one's ever gonna get a word out. We wanna make sure we wait and being respectful of that person taking their time and energy to tell us something we need to work on or something that needs to change. Four, thank the person for that feedback because they're taking time out of their day and energy to help you. They could choose not to do that. It's not mandatory, even with supervisors. Some feedback is mandatory, some is not. So if somebody's really taking the time to give you feedback, thank them. Step five, you might wanna write down the feedback so that you don't forget and you don't have to ask your boss five times in a row. You don't have to ask your friend again. You wanna be respectful of that. Step six, discuss your feedback with a trusted adult. Call on your support system, work it out with them. Even role play it, say, you know what? My friend Johnny told me this and I said this. Was that something I should do? Maybe I should have said something else. Role playing is a great way to practice and learn. And then step seven, lucky number seven, we wanna start changing our behavior. We're attempting to change and start with little steps. So here we're gonna watch Tom. And the situation is that Natalie, the friend, she's gonna call Tom, she's gonna give him some feedback and we're gonna see how Tom reacts. So up until now, Tom has been very angry and upset. So let's see if he follows the steps. Now it doesn't have to follow it perfectly, but let's see if we can recognize which steps he did. Again, if the volume is too low, just go ahead and put it on your computer. Hey, it's Natalie, finally. Hi, Tom. Hey, Natalie, you're finally calling me. How are you? Good, how you doing? I kind of want to talk to you about something. So, lately you've been calling me a lot and sending me lots of text messages and it makes me feel really anxious and then I feel overwhelmed. And I don't wanna hurt your feelings and I wanna stay friends, but I wanted to give you this feedback so that maybe you don't call me as much. Uh, thank you for telling me, I appreciate it that you told me this and I didn't know it bothered you so much. Um, I'll write it down so that I won't forget and I'll try to do better next time. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Thank you, Tom. Okay, bye Natalie. Bye Tom. All right, so Natalie gave Tom feedback and we wanna check based on our list, what did Tom do? So in the chat, based on the list that we have on the screen, you can tell me step one, step two, step three, what steps did Tom take? And this is probably the first time in our video series that Tom has handled feedback in a positive way. So he didn't do it perfectly, but that's okay. It's all about baby steps. So I'll give you a moment in the chat to put what steps did Tom complete or what did he do in the video? Okay, we've got some people noticing steps one through four. Then we have a one, two, four, five, and seven. Um, kept his cool. Many people pointed out that he kept his cool. They also pointed out that the caller used I statements, which was good. Um, he kept calm and in control. A lot of people have seen one, two, three, four, and some people saw seven. So, and we have one, three, four, and seven. <laughs> yeah, so it, and I'm glad that you guys caught, he did do some of these steps. So if we compare Tom to this video compared to the other three, Tom already is making changes. So whoever did put seven, you're right. He's already starting to change his behavior. He's not reacting. He's not letting his emotions influence his behavior. He said he took a deep breath. Did you guys catch that? Before he, he let Natalie talk, he took a deep breath 
because I'm sure he was probably getting upset. He took a deep breath, he calmed himself down. He waited to respond. He said, thank you, I didn't know, like I wasn't aware. Maybe he didn't realize that he was calling so much. He said that he was going to write down the feedback so that way he could remember and that, you know, he was going to try his best. And that's really all that we want to start off with is that you're going to try. Is it going to be perfect? No. Maybe Tom might call her five times one day and 12 the other, but he's going to try. So that's what's really important about handling feedback is the result. What's happening after the feedback. So that was actually a really important video because it dealt with a friendship. And sometimes in friendships, we have to have these conversations. And even though they might be tough and make us feel uncomfortable because Natalie on the phone sounded a little uncomfortable, right? She wasn't like, hey, how you doing? You know, you're calling me too much. She was kind of like, well, I feel, and it's going to be uncomfortable and that's okay. But if you would like for something to change in the friendship, then, Giving feedback is really important, but also knowing how to handle it as well. So when we talk about what is a friendship, so there's many different definitions, but we look at it as a long-term connection with someone because we say a friendship is definitely a relationship that we build and it can be between people who enjoy being together, right? I don't have friends where I'm like, oh, I have to hang out with her again. That's not really a friend. If you don't enjoy that person's company most of the time, then maybe they might not be the best person to be your friend. Or it could be a relationship between people who have similar interests and we call those common interests and we're gonna review them. So there are lots of different types of friendships and we have four pretty much choices here. So especially when we're younger, Sometimes when we meet someone the first time or we see um, the post, um, like the mailman or mailwoman, or we see someone at the grocery store and we're like, hey, hi, we might think, oh, that's my friend because you're saying hi. But in reality, those people are acquaintances. So you may have seen them once, you really don't know them really well. You might not even ever see them again. So you wanna make sure that we know those people as acquaintances. Casual friends. So sometimes let's say right now, because of the pandemic, there's a lot of virtual groups. You might attend a virtual group and see these same people all the time. But if you don't talk to them outside of the group or during the group, maybe they're just casual friends because you know their names, you're interacting occasionally in different activities online, but you don't know them well enough that they're a good friend or a regular friend. When we go into the next category of a regular friend or a good friend, we start talking with that person. We hang out with them outside of where we see them. So if you met somebody at school and you started hanging out outside of school, or you met somebody at work and you start hanging outside of work, that's when you start to become more good friends or regular friends. Now, best friends, if we look at this, this is like a pyramid, right? It's a triangle. Best friends are at the top because we don't have a lot of best friends because these people is where we spend a lot of our free time. They tend to, we hang out with them a lot. Um, we might have similar friends. They have a lot of good characteristics of a good friend that we're gonna talk about in a moment. You might have a couple of good friends. I probably have two really good friends that I've had since high school and I talk to them almost every day. But that's different from where in Tom's situation, they weren't best friends. He was saying you're best friends, but the way that you engage with this person is going to change. So best friends can probably talk to each other multiple times a week and see each other, but acquaintances don't. So this is a great way to kind of look at the different types of friendships and seeing does the behavior or what they're doing match on how I know this person. So that brings us to the characteristics of good friendships. So I want you to just take a moment in your mind. I want you to pick one of your friends. You don't have to put it in the chat. Pick one of your friends. And I want you to think about this person. And we're going to ask each other these questions. So in your mind, ask yourself, does this person share common interests with me? So do we like the same stuff? 
I know a lot of you are gamers, so maybe that person's a gamer too, or they're into art, or they're into history. Is this person caring and kind? You know, are they really nice to me? Um, do they care? You know, if I was sick, maybe would they call me? Maybe would they bring me something? Do they support me? Let's say, you know, if I'm going to school or I'm working, are they cheering me on? Are they loyal? You know, is it someone that stands by your side? It's not someone that makes fun of you or talks behind your back all the time. Is this person honest? Can I trust them? So if you tell them a secret or something personal to you, are they keeping it to themselves or are they telling everybody about it? When you disagree, because it always happens in a friendship, do we work it out? Or is that the end of the friendship where I believe this and my best friend believes that and that's it, it's over. Do we agree to disagree? Do we work it out? I want you to think about the friend in your mind. And are they respectful of me and my space? So like Tom, Tom was making his friend feel very uncomfortable. She started feeling anxious. She was not used to somebody calling and texting all the time. Now, with Natalie telling Tom about her space, if Tom follows the feedback and calls her less, that's great. But if Tom does the opposite and keeps calling and keeps making Natalie anxious, is that a person we still wanna be friends with? Is are they respecting our boundaries? Are they respecting our space? So whenever you have a new friend or a friend you've had for a while, I want you just to think of these questions. Now, if you answered no, it doesn't mean like, that's it, we're not friends anymore. That's not the purpose of this exercise. It is, can you give this person feedback based on this question? So for example, when we disagree, do we work it out? If we don't, maybe we need to talk about that. Maybe we need to talk about how we just need to respect when we disagree that I think this way and you think that way and that's it. Nothing that you say is going to change what I think and nothing that I say is gonna change what you think. And that happens a lot in a friendship that we just wanna be respectful of what you believe and what you do. Now we mentioned common interests. So common interest is one of the important goals of training information. So when you're meeting new people and maybe you wanna make friends, you want to have some common interest. So here we have people that are gaming, maybe you're a reader, maybe you're like into Audible. I heard somebody use Audible before. Maybe you're really like into manga or comic books or you're really movie buff. So we wanna kind of hang out and talk about those things with people with, this, with similar interest. When you have conversations and you trade information when you meet for the first time, it's also good to learn what those people don't like. Because if they don't like something and you like it, and that's one thing that's okay, but if it's like a list of five or 10 things, maybe that's not the best compatible friendship. It depends. Do the common interests outweigh the dislikes? So why is it important to find common interest? So it helps us keep the conversation going, especially when we first meet a new person. It gives you things to talk about, right? So if I know you're a gamer. I can ask you what console do you have? Do you play online? Are you into PS5? Are you Xbox? Or let's say your Switch. Did you play Animal Crossing? Did you play Breath of the Wild? Are you into Pokemon? There's so many more topics that come out of that. So it really does help us when we first meet someone have these conversations. And then it gives us ideas or things to do together. So if you're both gamers and you play online, let's play online. Come to my island on Animal Crossing. So these are things that are good to find out about each other. And it's really that friendships are based on these common interests. You wanna surround yourself with people that like most of the things that you do. Doesn't have to be perfect, but most of the things that you do. So now that we talked about friendships and characteristics of a good friendships, where do we find these friends? We're going to tell you. So how do I, oops, sorry. How do you find these friends? How do you find people who, who share your common interest? So there's three ways. You first can start by trying new things to add to your interest. So let's say if you're 
into gaming and you're into things and you may have not found somebody else that are in their interest, you might want to try something new. Maybe when you try something new and you go to a new place or you start a new group, you might make a connection with someone. So sometimes we have to do some research, which brings me to two. Research an activity-based group on your interests. And we say activity-based because just like Natalie, she's a very anxious person, starting a new group and meeting new people might be overwhelming at first. But if it's activity-based, the focus is the activity, not just meeting new people. So finding groups with activities are a great way to say, hey, there's a trivia night and it's on friends. I really love friends. Other people that go to that trivia night probably also really like friends. So that's a way to connect and talk about how you know about the show and the history and everything like that. If you're already in a group, because there's many virtual groups right now, you want to start sharing your interest to see if someone has the same interest. So when you have opportunities, not during like right in the middle of trivia or not right in the middle of bingo, but when you have opportunities within the group or in the chat, you can say, hey, you know, I like that too. Or maybe somebody mentioned the Marvel movies and you're like, yeah, I love those too. Definitely Marvel, not DC. Um, or you might be more DC than Marvel. So you can start meeting people through chats or through different groups. And then that could lead to maybe connecting on social media, maybe online gaming, maybe start texting and calling. So the important thing about this option, the third option, if you're already in the group, is that both people have to agree. Both people are like, we're going to go and take this further. So we're both in this group, but now like, if I say, hey, do you wanna play Switch Online with me? And the other person's like, mm, not really, then I have to be respectful of that person's choice and decision. And then maybe I can ask somebody else. So both parties or both people have to agree onto the next step in order to take it. So we talk about research. Sometimes it might be hard to find a game online or an activity online because there's a million things online. And we wanna make sure that you are finding a safe option and an option that's the best fit for you. So here at CARD, we have our own groups. So if you are registered with CARD, which a lot of you are in this training, you may already attend these groups. But for those of you who are not registered with CARD, if you do have an, a documented autism diagnosis, you can reach out to us, register, and then we can see if you're a best fit for the groups. So we have support groups like the adult support group or the women's support group run by, uh, facilitated by Jennifer Feinstein. We also have some social opportunities through social game that I run. Activity-based, Sylvia Gill helps set up all the all abilities events. So if you like events that involve the community and some of our community partners, that could be a cool group. We also have our Life for Adults group, which is life skills that I run. And then we have Job Club, which is all different job skills, whether you're working right now or looking for work that Jennifer Feinstein runs. We have a lot of different options for groups that have either an activity or a focus to help you meet new people, but also build skills as well. So for some of you, you know that we have a team page. This is just a little excerpt of it. Um, but if someone can put that in the chat, if you're interested in groups and meeting new people, we have the link there and it'll also be sent to you by email. Now, let's say if you're not able to register with CARD because of our eligibility, there's lots of options online in our community. So these are our free, free, virtual community groups. So we have lots of, group, lots of our constituents have gone to these groups, really enjoyed them. So we have um, through meetup.com, there's the Fort Lauderdale Asperger's Syndrome Meetup Group. So Asperger's Syndrome used to be a diagnosis under the autism spectrum. And in this group, they have a talk time. They also do virtual gaming on Discord. So that's pretty cool. We also have many friendship um, community groups. So we have the Friendship Circle um, of Fort Lauderdale and Miami, and they're running a lot of virtual programs from cooking, dancing, acting, singing. Also the friendship journey, they have um, between the friendship journey and Dylan Wings of Change, they have Wings of Friendship. 
So they run groups right now during the year and also a summer camp. So that could be an option. Special Olympics, even though right now they're not doing a lot of in-person events, Special Olympics has some great activities online to help you stay fit. So you're ready to go back into season. So these are all free groups. Now, if you are able to, there are some fee-based, meaning you're gonna have to pay either for a membership or for a specific class. So we have a list of those here too. So we have the David Posniak JCC Givering You. They have both in-person right now and virtual. We have some people probably have already participated or know about the Exceptional Theater Company. So if you're into acting and dancing and you wanna go on the stage, that could be a really cool group for you. There's also JAFCO. So for a lot of my teens, the, and JAFCO is the Jewish Adoption and Family Care Options. They have a lot of great teen groups like teen socials, cooking for teens. So that could be a nice option. We have a lot of people that joined Remarkable that have their virtual clubhouse. So they do a um, fee of $99 per month and they have a list of activities the whole month. So that could be something to look into. Down in Miami, we do have the social cog. So they were meeting in person and or hopefully will be reopening this fall. So if you're in the Miami area and wanna meet people and get support on how to navigate these social situations, the social cog could be a great program for you. And then lastly on this list is the Unicorn Children's Foundation. So they have programs for children, teens and adults, all different areas from cooking to cake making, um, and some minimal fees, so not as expensive, and they're doing all virtual. So we have lots of options for you. So instead of you going onto Google and try to figure out where do I start, where do I go, we're gonna email this presentation, open it up, and literally click on the link. So all the links are underlined. They will take you to the correct website and do your research there. Go to the web website, look what's being offered, how much does it cost, what's the age, what's the activities, and if it's something you like and you can pay for, great. If not, have some conversations with families. If not, the first page is all free groups. So we cut a little bit of the research for you. So you have a starting off point. And there's many other groups in the community. These are just the ones that we included here. Um, I do want to make a statement that UMNSU card does not um, endorse any programs. We're here to share information, but we have had some adults attend these groups and have given us great feedback. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. So thank you so much for coming to part three of our training series.